Hey everyone, so if you watched my gathered skirt video, where I basically just flounder around being completely clueless about sewing for 10 minutes straight, you know that I thought that that skirt looked kind of like something that Maria from The Sound of Music would wear. So I am finished stitching all the gathers into place. Um, I tried on the skirt briefly and I look like Maria from The Sound of Music, which is great. Um, that's actually really cool. That sparked some inspiration for my next project, which may or may not be completely overly ambitious for my basically non-existent sewing skills. All I have to say is I have confidence in me. Whether it's too much or not, time will tell. As you have gathered from the title and my bad pun, I'm making the outfit from the I Have Confidence scene in The Sound of Music, which consists of a fitted grey dress and a cropped jacket thing. As you have also gathered from the title, this is a two-part video, and today I'm just going to be making the dress. For fabric, I bought the cheapest wool I could find, which just happens to be a 50% wool, 50% polyester blend. I'm going to be making the jacket out of burlap, but I'll talk more about that in the next video. I also bought a sewing pattern online that looked similar to the dress in the movie. As you can see, the pattern has slits in the shoulders, and I didn't realize that until like halfway through making the dress, as that probably was not on the original. It also has flutter sleeves, which also probably weren't on the original, but I decided to keep them because A, I didn't know how to get rid of them and they would be hidden under the coat anyway, and B, they would be nice if I wore the dress as not part of the costume. The dress from the movie has a turtleneck, but again, not part of the pattern and I don't really want that. So let's get started. I guess I'll take the time right now to explain how the dress is structured, because it's not just two panels with the sleeves attached, it's got a bit more going on. By the way, I'm making pattern A, the dress with the sleeves. So first, the dress has a front panel, and a total of four side panels, and technically two back panels, but I count them as one because the only reason there are two is so that there's a seam to attach the zipper. As you can see, the two side panels on each side have two diagonal seams running through them, and they meet on the side of the dress in an arrowhead shape. So yeah, those are the basic shapes. I'll label the pieces as I cut them out for you guys so that it makes a bit more sense. So the first thing I did was I cut out my pattern pieces, then pinned them onto the fabric. So the first piece was just a facing piece, meant to sit on the inside of the dress and give the neckline a bit more shape. I don't really know how big of a difference it really made, but I put it in anyway. The next piece was one of the tops of the side panels. Take note of how I flipped it over before placing it down, cause that caused some problems later on. The next piece was the sleeve piece. I should probably mention that on the bottom edge of the frame is a fold, so I'm cutting two of all these pieces and a symmetrical version of all the pieces that are against the bottom edge. Next is the sleeve facing, which unlike the other one, I actually know what it does. It gives the sleeve a tiny bit of puffiness. This piece is the bottom of all four of the side panels, and I cut another one of these off camera so that I would have four. This is another facing piece, and this piece is the front of the dress, and as you can see, it's lined up with the fold so that I get a symmetrical piece. This piece is the two back panels. Then I pinned all the pieces and cut them out. I really like how they included a nice little diagram for me on how to lay out the pieces in the most efficient way while still staying on green and having the correct number of each piece. This was my first sewing pattern, so I don't know if that's a standard thing to do on all patterns, but it really should because it was really helpful. At this point, I was pretty nervous because I had no idea what half the directions meant and how the whole thing fit together. Plus, I was quite a bit smaller than the original pattern, smallest size, so I knew I would have to make some alterations. I decided that the best way to do this, and the best way to procrastinate it, was to assemble and sew the whole dress, then try it on inside out and take in the seams as much as I needed. And now I'm just doing a bit of stay stitching in various places, basically wherever the directions told me to. Now I'm pinning together the side panels down the diagonal seam and stitching it down. I should probably take the time to introduce you to my $25 mini sewing machine from Amazon. <laughs> it breaks a lot and after sewing the entire dress with it, I can now say I'm an expert at repairing this thing. It also only goes at one speed, very, very fast, so the majority of my lines at the beginning were very crooked. Towards the end, it got better, but the hem is still really crooked. Now that I had my four panels, I pinned the two front ones indicated in the pattern to the front of the dress and sewed. As you may have noticed, the lighting in most of these sewing machine shots is awful, and you can thank those random summer thunderstorms for that. Well, I guess I have confidence in rain. Then I pin the back side panels to the back of the dress. I 
guess I have confidence in sunshine now because this shot is really nice and probably the best it's going to get. Anyway, I just sewed down where I pinned. Next, I pinned the zipper to the back panels and backstitched the thumb by hand because I didn't trust the machine with it. So this is how the zipper seam looks so far. And this is what it looks like from the outside. So here's the dress so far. This is what it looks like. I just sewed the, um, the front piece to the back piece. Um, but I think I did something wrong because um, as you can see, the dress has two seams here on the front and on the back and they're supposed to meet on the side in like a kind of like arrow shape. Um, but mine don't do that. <laughs> Instead, they do this, which is kind of like just two lines. Um, I don't know how that happened, but I can live with it. I think it'll, it'll look a little odd, but I think it'll be fine. After thinking about it for a couple days, I think I know. Remember when I was laying out the pattern pieces and I flipped one of them over when I wasn't supposed to? I think that made two of my top side panels mirrored. So I essentially had four of the same piece instead of two pieces that mirrored the other two, if that makes any sense. And that caused the situation. Okay, so it took me a bit of concentration and a lot of Googling to figure out how to do this, uh, the sleeves. And I think I figured that out. What you're supposed to do is from here to here, you're supposed to do an E-stitch. It's basically a stitch that you could gather up and create um, some ruffles. So you're just supposed to do the E-stitch from here to here. And then there's a facing piece that you're supposed to sew on. And, um, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna attach it to the dress. I guess I'll do that when, it, when I come to it. But um, I think I've got the sleeve down. It sounds really simple once I explain it, but I had a lot of trouble comprehending that. <laughs> and I'm probably not gonna film any of it because I already have enough trouble making straight lines on the sewing machine, so <laughs> yeah. I did end up filming some, mainly just pinning though. What I didn't film was making the E-stitches and ironing and basting the facing in half. So what I'm doing now is the directions ask you to tighten the E-stitches until the corners of the facing piece lined up with the ends of the E-stitching. So I tried to do that, but I found that it fit even when I hadn't tightened the stitches at all. This caused some problems later on, so you'll see them in a bit. I didn't even have to pull the E-stitches for this piece to fit perfectly, so I must have done something wrong, but I don't know, I'm just gonna ignore it and keep going. So yeah, I ignored it, which probably was not the wisest decision, and proceeded with stitching on the facing and understitching the facing to the seam allowance. I also stitched the underarm seam twice for reinforcement. Then I pinned it into the armhole, but I kept the top edge that had the facing attached loose to form the slits in the shoulders. Next, I moved on to the neckline facing pieces. I cut them out of interfacing, then secured them to their fabric counterparts. Okay, so all the facing pieces had me confused for quite some time, um, but I just took a break and came back to it, and now I think I know what I'm doing. The only problem is, in the instructions, uh, the, the facing pieces are depicted as being sewn together, but 
we were never asked to do that in the instructions, like in word form. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do that or not, or if it's just like a, an error. Um, I'm going to do it though, because I think it'll make them easier to attach. So yeah, I'm gonna go do that. And here's the facing pieces before I attached them. So, as I mentioned before, I was confused on how to attach them. So what I did was I sewed on the front portion because I was 100% sure on how that was supposed to work. Then, once it was sewn, I flipped it so that the facing lay on the inside of the dress, and then I understood perfectly how it was supposed to lay, curving around the armhole and being sewn to the seam allowances. Once the facings were attached, I sewed the shoulder straps together off camera. So I tried on the dress and it fits awfully. Um, but what I'm really worried about is the shoulders because there's like a ton of extra fabric here and I don't really know how that happened probably because I didn't tighten the e-stitches because I thought they fit but um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take in take it in a little bit with a little bit of gathers and then just um, sew it onto this strap here so, as I said, I ran a gathering thread along the top of the sleeve, then tightened it until it fit the shoulder a bit better, and hand sewed it to the dress. So here's the dress inside out. Um, I just tried it on and fitted it to my body a little bit better with the seams facing outwards. As you can see, I had to take out quite a bit in several spots, so yeah. Now I think I'm just going to sew down the lines I marked uh, and hope I don't mess up and it doesn't fit anymore. So yeah. I lather stitched the front seam so that I could see exactly what I was doing as I was doing it on the front of the dress. This caused the seams to look a little funny, but I'd rather have weird seams than a dress that doesn't fit like it's supposed to. did the side seams by machine off camera because it was evening and the light was awful, and I did the back seams by hand, then reinforced them with the machine. Obviously, since it was on my back, the seams weren't easily accessible to fit and look at, so the back came out really messy, but shh, nobody's going to know aside from the whole internet. <laughs> Finally, I was on to the finishing work, which included hemming the bottom and the sleeve edges, as well as finishing all the raw edges on the inside of the dress. So I folded and pinned down the bottom hem, and sewed it by machine. It seems as though whenever I have to make something straight, I simply cannot. Like the hem is so crooked, and I hate it, but I don't feel like I'm picking it, so I'm just leaving it. And I also hemmed the sleeves, which came out better. Now, to finish the seams on the inside, I opted to cut strips of scrap fabric and encase the seams in it because they were just a complete mess from all the alterations and parts were too short to fold under and sew the regular way and everything. I couldn't be bothered tucking in the raw edges of the casings, so it kind of defeated the point, but it's fine. So the very last thing I'm going to do is add some pockets to the dress because I think we can all agree that Maria would want pockets in her dress. So I'm just going to be using my pocket pattern that I made in my last video um, when I was making my skirt and some scraps that I'm just going to cut it out of. So yeah. I didn't film much of the pockets, but please enjoy this sad attempt at a cool transition. And here's the pocket sewn into the dress at those arrowhead seams I messed up. I forgot my pocket pattern didn't have seam allowances built in, so they're kind of tiny, and the holes are a bit too small for me to smoothly slip my hand inside, but I didn't feel like messing with it, because semi-functional small pockets are better than no pockets, right? 
And with that, the dress was finished. Here's how it came out, and I'm really happy with how it fits and everything. Sure, I could nitpick some things about it, like the weird front seams and the messy back that I forgot to take a picture of, and how the hem is nowhere near straight, but overall, it's pretty good for my second project. Also, it is so epic wearing a dress from The Sound of Music. Also, just a side note, the making of the jacket and this video is going to be pushed back a week because the Costume College live streams are happening next weekend, and it's probably wise for me to watch some before I attempt drafting my own pattern with only the help of an online guide and my literal two sewing projects of experience. So yeah, I'll have a different video for you guys next week, maybe the week after that too, depending on how long it takes me. With that out of the way, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe for more fuzzy sock plushies, crochet tutorials, sewing videos, and whatever else I feel like doing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!